If you're a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you're looking for more funding for your real estate deals, regardless of what your hard money lender is say, regardless of what your banker or mortgage broker will say, you're in the right place. Well, welcome to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, coming to you here from Moorhead City, North Carolina, and giving advice and wisdom and experience to real estate investors all across the globe. If this is your first time to being with us on the show, I want to give you a special welcome and a hello. Wow. We are getting people chiming in from all over the world, and the uh, our YouTube channel is blowing up, the podcast as well. So anyway, if you like what you hear today and it's your first time, we for sure want you to uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and comment below. We'll get any of your questions uh, answered that you got. Comment. If you're listening to uh, iTunes or on Google Play, uh, for sure subscribe so you don't miss out. And also rate and review. We appreciate that. Today, I'm going to be talking about nine reasons that you will profit and make more money by selling your real estate deals on rent to own or lease purchase than you will just putting it in the multiple listing service. But before I give you those nine reasons, I first want to let you know about the upcoming live event that we've, that we've got coming right around the corner. I'm going to go ahead and put the website right here so you can check it all out. If you're a real estate investor, brand new or seasoned, you're definitely going to want to check out the upcoming live event. I don't know another live event like this, Real Estate Investing Cash Flow Conference. Here's the website, www.jayconner.com forward slash all in lowercase money podcast. And just a highlight on this event, you can read all about it at the website there. We have private lenders at the event for you to network with. We have a rehab bus tour on the afternoon of the first day where you actually see how we find our deals before other real estate investors know they exist. You'll meet our dream team, how we work with our contractors, our interior designer, and et cetera. On the second day, you'll learn about our foreclosure system, which attributes about 25% of our business, and our selling system, how to sell any house in three days or less. And then the third day is all about automation. On the afternoon of the second day, we have private lenders actually at the event. So again, I don't know another one like it. And I am there the entire time doing all the training. So I look forward to meeting you. What makes me different? Well, I'm in a small market. I've been doing it for 15 years. My total market is 40,000 people. And we, in the past 12 months, have cashed out on 27 houses and the profit has averaged $64,000 per deal. So if you'd like to learn how we do it and you duplicate it, then get on over to www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. All right. Well, on with the show. Nine reasons as to why you would want to consider selling a house, one of your investment properties on rent to own. It is the most profitable way to make money. So here's the nine reasons. Number one reason is when you sell on rent to own or lease purchase, and by the way, they are, they are one and the same, you are going to be able to collect when you sell a very large non-refundable option fee, a non-refundable option fee. So here's the way that works. You've got the, uh, the house for sale. You can be, sell and by the way, this strategy works in no matter what condition the house is in. You can be selling it on work for equity, to where you're selling the home as is. You could have fixed it up and rehabbed it, or it can be a, uh, a home that you've gotten and it needs no repairs and you're selling it you know, to a retail buyer, but they may need a little bit of repair on their credit. So number one reason is you're gonna get a large non-refundable option fee. Here's the way the option fee works. When a buyer, a rental home buyer gives you a option fee, then that option is your money. You can do with it what you want to. But along with that, when the buyer is ready for a mortgage, see the reason they're buying from you on rent to own is because either they don't have the credit score that they need today in order to buy the home, or maybe they got the credit score, but they don't have the down payment saved up. So for whatever reason, you're agreeing for them to move into your home. And I'll tell you this, when we sell a home on rent to own, when we're at the closing table at the real estate attorney's office, and yes, 
We do use a real estate attorney for even closing all of our rent to own buyers. We tell the buyer this home for all practical purposes is your home. We just haven't transferred the title yet into your name. And so you'll see one of the benefits in a moment is that they're going to be responsible for all the repairs. So this gets rid of that notion of being a landlord and converts the tenant buyers, we call them tenant buyers because on one hand right now they're tenants, but they are moving to actually being a buyer of the home. So this uh, non-refundable option fee is going to be at least 5% of the purchase price that you set and sometimes even more than that. So you get the option fee. Now, the way the paperwork is written up, you will apply that option fee when they are ready for the mortgage to their closing cost first. And then if they have more option money left over, that will then be applied to the down payment after it's been applied to the closing cost. Now, so that so instant, instant cash flow when you sell on rent to own this way. That's the number one reason. The second big reason, and this is one reason it's the, one of the most profitable ways to sell your investment properties, your single family houses. And that is, I set the price on the home at least 5%, sometimes 10% above what the home would appraise for today. Now here's why, a couple of reasons. Number one, the rent to own buyer, their primary motive is not price. Okay, their primary motive, uh, buying motive is not price. You see, if their primary buying motive was price, then they'd be looking in the multiple listing service because they'd already be pre-approved for a mortgage. So in our world of selling rent to own, their primary motive is, do they like the home? Do they have enough down payment for you to accept them? And what's the monthly payment? Price is their last consideration. All right. So since that is the case, I'm able to set the price at between five and 10 percent above what the home would appraise for today. Now, the second reason that I set the price at five to 10 percent above is because I want to take advantage of appreciation. So, you know, I give my rent to own buyers most of the time, 12 months, one year to get ready for the mortgage and then move to cash out. Now. During that time, they'll be working on their mortgage. And I don't want to shoot myself in the foot by setting the price on the house today as to what it would appraise for. Well, my lands, we're in an appreciating market. So I don't want to give up the appreciation or give up additional profit from where the house would be valued at today. So that's two reasons. Number one, your buyer's not primarily motivated by price. And secondly, I want to take advantage of the appreciation that's going to take care of, that's going to happen over the next 12 months. That's the second reason. The third reason is, of course, you're going to be able to get positive cash flow, monthly positive cash flow. And that's the difference between the rent that you are bringing in per month and your underlying debt. Now, I could have bought the house subject to the existing note. I have an underlying debt with the current mortgage company or as you hear me teach a lot, I could get the funding from a private lender. And so I get to pocket the spread each month between what they're paying in per month on the rent and what I'm paying out to say a private lender. That's number three. Number four is huge. I alluded to it just a moment ago. And that is, it is in our agreement that the uh, rent to own buyers they have got 30 days from the time that they move into the home to discover and report any items or any, anything in the house, uh, any of the major components that are not operating as they are intended. So if there's any kind of problem with the HVAC or appliances, or if there's any kind of leak or any problems with the windows, anything with the house, they have 30 days to report that. Then after 30, and I'm responsible for the repairs within the first 30 days. So then after that, that initial 30 days, the tenant buyer is responsible for the repairs. That's why we tell them, and they know this prior to the closing table. That's why they, we tell them that for all intents and purposes, you are the owner of this home. We just haven't transferred the title. And of course, 
what comes along with the obligation and responsibility of being a homeowner is you're responsible for the repairs. The fifth reason and benefit from selling on rent to own is while they are in the home and they're renting, all right, you get to take advantage of your taxes. And that is you get to write off, you know, the depreciation on the property because they are a tenant buyer. And until they get ready for a mortgage and they're actually closing on the house and the title and deed is transferring, then you get to take advantage of the depreciation. Number six reason I sort of mentioned as to being able to set the price at five to 10 percent above, and that is you get to take advantage of the appreciation that's taking place in the in the property. The seventh reason is when you're making interest payments to either a private lender that has funded the deal for you, or if you bought the home subject to the existing note, then all that interest that you pay to the current lender, the current mortgage holder from the seller that you bought the house from, that interest you also get to write off on your taxes. So that's another tax benefit. The eighth reason or benefit to selling on rent to own is if the tenant buyer, the rent to own buyer does not get ready for a mortgage within the term, then you have an option. And, or you have a choice. That is, you can continue to work with them and let them continue to work on getting their credit ready. If the term of the option lease period has expired, you can require more option money if you desire. The way I do it is if they have been holding up their end of the deal on getting ready for a mortgage, then I'm not going to charge any more option fee. I'm just going to extend the term. However, if they move out, that's a non-refundable option fee. So you get to retain the option and then you go sell the home again, of course, and get and collect another option fee. Now, my outlook on business is this, and it's different from a lot of other real estate investors and entrepreneurs and even friends of mine. My model is that if a rent to own buyer moves in, they have the intention of owning that home or they wouldn't be putting down the large non-refundable option fee. Now, I'm going to do everything that I can to help that rent to own buyer actually own that home. So I actually force them into credit repair, okay? It's in my option agreement. They agree to enroll into credit repair. There's a company that I use that I've been using for nine years and they do a fantastic job. In fact, 80% of my rent to own buyers actually cash out and get the title transferred. Whereas if you leave them to their own devices to get it done on their own, then unfortunately only about 5% of them will cash out. And so my intention is to support and to help and to serve the rent to own buyer the best that I can. And if they will follow the instructions that uh, we give them, they're going to get ready for the mortgage within that six month, nine month, 12 month period, as we've outlaid or outlined the program. Now, why don't the other 20% of my rent to own buyers cash out? Well, something happened, typically out of their control. Either someone died that had household income or someone lost a job or they got separated and got a divorce. Something happened that took away the monthly household income. But 80% cash out in my world is very, very large on rent to own buyers. And again, that's because we pony up and saddle up with our rent to own buyers and do everything in our power to help them actually attain the goal and their desire when they started out in the, in, the, uh, in the program. And that is for them to enjoy the American dream. So that's different than a lot of my other colleagues, but our intention is to help people get to where they want to go. And that is to actually own the home. So number eight is if they do move out, you retain the option fee. You get to sell the house again, collect another option fee and help those people move towards cash out. And then the ninth reason for rent to own or selling on rent to own is typically there are no inspections when it comes time for cash out. So 
you know, we have two adversaries as real estate investors when it comes to cashing out on a single family house. Those two adversaries are number one, the appraiser, okay? Number two is the buyer's inspection company that they hired. Now, when you're selling a house in the multiple listing service, which is the most expensive way to sell a house, by the way, when you're selling a house in the multiple listing service, invariably, the buyer, at the advice of their buyer's realtor agent, real estate agent, is going to advise them to get an inspection. And that's well advised. I mean, if you're ready for a mortgage and you're buying a house in the multiple listing service, you should hire an inspection company. Today, it's going to cost about 450 bucks. And it is the job of the inspector to find everything, small or large, minuscule or macro, wrong with the property to earn their money that they're charging. And so I get it. I mean, you know, if I'm buying a house, I'm hiring an inspection company. I want them to find every minute thing that they can find. So in this world of selling on rent to own, there is typically no inspection, no inspector when it comes time for the rent to own buyer to cash out. And here's why. They've been living in the home, all right, for six months, nine months, 12 months. If there's anything of any major consequence or possible consequences wrong with the home, then they are probably going to find it. Now, would I prevent one of my rent-to-own buyers from hiring an inspection company to get an inspection done? Absolutely not. That is their legal right. And in my opinion, it is their ethical right. They are buying the house. And if they want to get an inspection company, then they should hire it and they're going to pay for it. But in the real world, in what's really out here that's happening, when you have a rent-to-own buyer, They've been living in the home for quite, you know, quite a few months. Then in all probability, they're not going to be getting an inspection and not, you know, have a company that just nitpicks you to death. So there you have it. The nine reasons. You get a large non-refundable option fee. You get to set the price on your house at least five. In my case, many times, most times, 10% above what it will appraise for today. You're going to get positive cash flow. The rent-to-own buyer, of course, is responsible for repairs. While they're in the house and while you own the house, you get the tax advantage of depreciation. You're paying private lender interest or you're paying a mortgage company that you bought the house subject to. You get to write that interest off. And if your tenant buyer moves out, of course, you'll sell it again and get another non-refundable option fee and no inspections. Well, there you have it. Thank you for joining me again on another one of these uh, episodes or shows of uh, Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. Glad to have you on. Again, if you haven't checked out the upcoming live again, Jay Connors Real Estate Cash Flow Conference, right here. Get right on over and check it out and get registered at www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. Bye for now, and we'll see you on the next show.